We rounded third. We're heading for home tonight on Spaced Out Radio. My name is Dave Scott. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. want to remind you that if you've missed most of this show or others, check out our free archives by going to youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out radio just do old give me the favor hit that subscribe button our website is spacedoutradio.com where we have a plethora of features for you including rocking out to bumblefoot and reading up on captain shirk's sor newswire follow us on twitter at spaced out radio and on instagram spaced out radio show let's get to the unbiased ufo report I love the Bumblefoot music. Warming us up for Stetson John Hudson, who comes on in to talk about everything to do with the UFO world. John, how you doing, my friend? Doing, doing good and happy to be here. Happy to be here. Wow, quite a guest. Well, quite a guest. She was amazing. Yeah, Patty Negri is amazing. And, and, you know, it's uh, I hadn't had her on in a couple of years, and that's to my dismay and my bad i'll take responsibility for that but her love and energy and zest for life and you know she's always always been a fan of our show always and uh i i can't thank her enough she's just amazing and of course you got merle there too absolutely absolutely yeah yeah but you know she's such a perfect example of how a, a human can basically you know normalize absolutely any environment i mean she lives in such a wacky world and she deals with it in such a pragmatic practical way it was it was really kind of a beautiful thing to listen to i mean she just rolls with it it's it's very cool all right let's get right to it and i'm gonna call this a bust of a press conference with this new psychic uh et contactee going by the name of angeli and she she today had a a press actually, conference yes, it was or yesterday, yesterday. Yeah, yesterday yeah. It had a press conference in Washington, D.C. about her contact. Now, the rumor was she was going to bring aliens down to have that conference with her. That was what came out first. That, of that, course, that, didn't happen. Yeah, that was that was one of the rumors. And, and I, actually, I don't know where that came from because because uh, her her actual press statement did not actually say that. But um, but the challenge is, is that she's so far out on the edge that, um, you know, people can insert all sorts of stuff. And it, it seems, you know, believable because, you know, it's 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 look this flat out. This is a very challenging story to follow and a very challenging story to do any kind of reporting on. Um, the irony that I found was that, you know, we had Tom DeLong uh, give a press conference with no press where he could have gotten them if he'd asked. And then she does a press conference, asks for press and no one shows up. So, uh, you know, it's, you know, we kind of come full circle in the UFO community. But um, but the, the thing was, is that it was a it was a long press conference. Um, the questions were um, essentially introduced through online questions, I believe. Um, the questions got pretty wooey, pretty fast. Um, and, uh, you know, if you find, if you're interested, I I suggest you check it out. Um, but she did come out and, uh, and give her full name and really identify herself and, uh, and give her background. Um, you know, I, I have actually spoken to her myself. Um, I, 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 I got in contact with her when she first kind of became public a long time ago. Um, and so I've talked to her a little bit. Um, she's got a very interesting professional past, and um, so who is and she? Who is she? She's basically a former. She's a former. She's a former uh, intelligence agent. She's she essentially uh, worked for the DIA and um, and um, basically uh, another individual um, who I don't know well, but I know somewhat well, claims to have actually validated her DD-214 and actually spoken to some of her former um, uh, supervisors and and gotten you know, feedback that essentially she was as significant of an asset as, as she claimed to be. She, she, you know, worked in the white house. I mean, she, she was, had a very high level clearance and, and, you know, on that side of it, not on the same kind of side that, you know, someone like Bob would have been on where they're doing inventions, but more on the operational side. And essentially she had a, a near death experience after that started seeing things in the hospital that ended up leading to a um, um, uh, an encounter um, at some period of time later, and that encounter then started what she 
uh, allegedly says is a relationship that she's had with some off-world beings. And in this press conference, what she announced is that she's going to be assembling a team and that that team will be going to the location where she originally met these um, these entities. And that um, it, it's her stated intention to bring multiple high definition cameras, be filming in multiple angles and to be gathering as much telemetry as possible. So the one thing I will give her credit for is she's she's every chance that she's had to back down. She's doubled down. And so what it means is we're either going to get something very interesting or she's going to explode in a big way because there, there's a point where you can't, you know, you, it's everything's on the table and, and there's, you know, it, it either is or it isn't. So um, so it's it's something worth keeping an eye on. But I but I will admit it's a it's a very, very challenging topic to um, to to look into. But there is a lot of data. She's done several interviews that are on YouTube and uh, she even did a regression with Barbara Lamb that um, she actually published. So you can actually watch that regression. Well, we got Barbara Lamb coming on in a couple of weeks. Oh, good. And, and, and let's make sure we remind ourselves yeah. to to talk to her about that. You know, as an experiencer myself, and I make no bones about it, you know, we can take people at their word. But sometimes when uh, where I get a little hesitant on supporting somebody like this, and I always tell our audience, just sit back and just watch what happens. Yeah. I did the same thing with yeah. TTSA. Just I got wait. my I got my butt chewed off by UFO Twitter on that end. But guess who ended up being right? Me. Me. That's who ended up being right. But, I mean, the, the idea that, you know, the way she's coming in, guns blazing, that she has the answers, that she's the ET contactee, she's the one who yep. delivered the message... We've heard this before yep. from other contactees. And I got to tell you, you know, it makes me kind of step back and say, you know what? I believe that she's probably had some really cool experiences. But when you go that hardcore on it, it, it really makes me wonder if, if there's another agenda. And yep. I, I just, I worry about that because this field is full of charlatans. It's full yep. of people trying to get their name out to get a piece of the of the pie, so to speak, the financial pie and the popularity pie. And I worry, even though she has an impressive resume that could potentially be confirmed, that this is a little bit too hardcore, you know, because once again, we're, we're told to trust someone from the government. And, and, and this is the challenge is that, you know, if you really look at her story and you really dissect it, is it really that different? than what say someone like Chris Bledsoe is saying. And honestly, it's not really that different, but the way she's executing it is drastically different. Chris has been slow rolling this message for a long time and you have to dig pretty deep to get down to what he's really talking about. Whereas she, as you say, has come out very aggressive, very in your face, very out front. And, uh, and it's hard because, you know, my instinct, you know, just, you know, uh, you know, full disclosure it is, is to be very skeptical, but I have to consider the fact that there are other people that are telling stories that are, are, you know, arguably just as fantastic that I do sometimes end up, you know, putting some faith into. And so it, it's hard when you kind of weigh those out, but to, to your point, the best advice any of us can take is just, you know, keep your ears open, keep your eyes open, you know, pay attention yeah. to as much of it as you want to and wait and see what happens. I would have been more comfortable in if she had proper media attention. And what I mean by that is don't create the spectacle. Don't go and put a bunch of live uh, internet cameras while you sit in a lawn chair in front of, I, I, I apologize, uh, you know, being Canadian, I, I don't know the building that she was sitting the in. The Lincoln Memorial. Of, the Lincoln Memorial. Okay, I apologize for that to our American listeners. But, you know. I'm sure Lincoln won't mind. But it wasn't the place. You know what I'm saying? It looked hokey and it didn't feel comfortable. And so uh, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm it was just, uh, that makes me skeptical. You know, I don't want to be, you know. But number two, it also comes out that we already know the government doesn't want to play the alien card yet. 
We know that. This goes against the grain, which is another thing. If her resume is true, and let's take her at her word for it until proven wrong, that her resume is true, that she did used to work for the DIA. And, you know, that that puts another government agent in the line of fire or former government agent in the line of fire and saying, trust me, trust me. I know what I'm talking about. Yep. Trust me. And, and Andy, and it, it grinds my teeth. Yep. And it's, it's entirely possible that up until say eight, eight, 10 years ago, she was this incredibly, uh, incredibly successful um, government uh, employee that did all sorts of fantastic things. But that doesn't mean that she didn't have something go wrong in her mind at some point And everything after that is not real. It's, so, I mean, you can't, you, you know, you can, you can use her career to establish some level of credibility, but you can't weigh too heavily on that because people change and people have experiences. And sometimes just because they had a, a stand up past doesn't always mean that the, their future is as accurate as even they perceive it to be. So you, you have right. to just wait and watch. All right, let's move on to topic number two, because Avi Loeb's Galileo project is starting to gain steam. It has raised over $2 million in private funding so far from uh, very generous donators to the cause looking for aliens in space or anything extraterrestrial. What's going on there? So it's just, it's, it's you know, okay. I mean, I, I, you know, I, just, I hate to just insert my opinion right off the bat, but it's, to me, it's just, it's just cool. It's just cool to see him making progress. It's cool to see his energy maintaining. It's cool to see him, you know, um, uh, picking his battles and so forth, you know, um, and, and what, you know, what he's doing is he's, he's essentially explaining what's happening. And so he, he's been kind of laying out, you know, that they now have uh, 20 scientists on staff. They have another uh, 20 advisors. They have about um, 30 people that are kind of affiliates that are kind of helping out. So all together, they already have about 70 people that are working on this project. And uh, and as you said, they got two million in funding, but he has made it a point to say that that two million dollars is only going to cover about 10 of the telescopes that they want to build. However, they have already started pricing out and ordering parts. So they, they have actually they're using all off the shelf components. So they're not using anything government specific. Um, so they have started buying to, for the purpose of building. But he said that to really cover the whole night sky, what they need is about 100 of these. And so that's why he needs to raise something close to, you know, a hundred million dollars to really kind of um, to really kind of do this to the level he wants. Um, but um, but he's making good progress. And then the really good news that came out is that Stanford, I mean, sorry, Harvard has really come out in support of this project. And, you know, initially, because he raised the two million on his own, he didn't have to go through the standard kind of grant and, you know, official process that, that you normally would have to. So he was able to bring people on right away, start executing right away. Um, but the challenge with that was, was that it was really only set up to accept very significant donations from individuals. And so because Harvard Harvard has jumped in and started this. If you go to the link, which I'll supply on, on my Twitter feed after this, um, Harvard's actually supplying a link where anyone can donate. And so now it's turning into more of a crowd sharing situation where there's still hope to raise those large investors. But if you want to go give $100 or, or whatever, you can just go do that. So if you want to be part of the program and help out, there's the opportunity to do that, which I think is very cool. Well, I mean, it's going to be interesting because looking at their website, there are, I have to say, some very questionable names on here, including the biggest one, Seth Stoshak, the former head of uh, the SETI program, the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, who literally for the last 20 plus years has been a thorn in the field of ufology side. So I'm quite, I'm quite amazed that they have this going on. However, look at it this way. If 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 someone like Seth was not on board, right? And and let's say, you know, some number of months from now, years from now, uh, Avi announces that yes, we we found something that we believe is is not of this earth, right? It's very easy for Seth from a distance to then take pot shots at what Avi's doing. By having him on board, essentially anything that this group announces is now attached to Seth to Seth as well, right? So unless he wants to resign in protest, he is now on the same boat. And so now whatever happens, he's being pulled along with the ride. And so it makes it much more difficult for him to cause trouble when you get down to it. 
I get that, and I can appreciate that. But that's not a name that has been good for this entire subject mm-hmm. unless he's been in denial because of his ties to NASA in recent years on not discussing the the merits of SETI and potentially what they have found or not. Well, found. and especially with him, it's not so much what he said. Skepticism is always welcome. Everyone should take a discerning eye to everything that all the dead look at. It's 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 been the dismissive and the 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 way he's 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 made comments that clearly shows a, a lack of respect and a lack of, of credibility that he assigns to, to members of this community. And, and that, that's the behavior that, that, is, that is harmful and not welcomed. Very true. Very true. And finally, quickly here, North Korea and UFOs, John. So this is just, this is a quick little story. And, you know, it, uh, it was, it's a story off of coast to coast. It's, you can go check it out. But the reason why I like it is because, you know, we, we often, you know, people often, often complain that this UFO phenomenon is very U.S. focused. There are other countries that are doing a lot of good work and they're doing a, a lot of public stuff. But however, we cannot assume that that's true in every country. And there are some countries where the subject is very verbatim, you know, uh, very forbidden. It's very, you know, you don't want to say it. But basically, this uh, North Korean defector was interviewed. And what he basically said was that for North Korea, it's a different situation. It's not so much that UFOs are forbidden. It's that even space itself is so is taught so little in schools. And because of the, the situation in North Korea, there's just there's no discussion. And he said that for he believes that for most North Koreans, UFO is not even in their vocabulary. And so what he says, it's not that they're not allowed to talk about it in public. He said they don't talk about it in private. Like there's no right. discussion of it at all. And so you have this whole country that's essentially a, a UAP UFO vacuum, right? And we have to recognize that there are countries like that. And there are other countries that are going to deal with a different way. And at some point, we all have to get on the same page. But it's not always that the U.S. is keeping people out of it. Sometimes they're keeping themselves out of it. Absolutely. John, we'll talk to you in a couple nights' time here on Spaced Out Radio with another edition of the unbiased ufo report we appreciate everything you're doing my friend and if you want to see what else john has covered you can go to our youtube channel and check out all the reports that we do every second night of the show that's what we do john we'll talk to you you soon all right here comes the news